so I will start just by presenting myself. Uh, so I'm Roy Jamil. I work uh, for AC6. Uh, we provide uh, training for embedded systems, um, programming, uh, RTOSs, Zephyr, of course, and many others, uh, many other training like Linux, security, and so on. Uh, so at AC6, we uh, be, beside training, we also provide uh, tools. So we uh, we have developed uh, several tools. One of them is for uh, STM uh, OpenSTM32 for my controllers. It is like the ancestor of Cube IDE. But since then, we have developed other tools. Uh, and uh, because we also have this expertise in developing tools, we thought about like developing a tool for for Zephyr. And this is where we had the idea to develop uh, Zephyr Workbench, which is a tool. Uh, for uh, for uh, so this is a VS Code extension for developing um, uh, Zephyr applications. Um, the idea is to make it um, that make it more Zephyr, more than like specific for the, any vendor. It is it works uh, with the Zephyr way because each vendor today has its own uh, extension. They work very well, but the idea here just to create an extension specific for Zephyr and uses the way Zephyr debugs, the way Zephyr create application. And it is like Zephyr way. It is open source. Uh, we we would be happy also to have your uh, contribution to this tool, to this tool. And um, yeah, so this is just the idea. I will try to be very quick. So I don't have slides. I will just show you directly the uh, the uh, the tool. Okay. So uh, the idea is here. We have. I will just share my screen. Okay. So this is uh, well VS Code, and uh, I have already here installed the uh, the extension. Um, so one of the first important thing that we have here in uh, Zephyr Workbench. So today, in order to get started with Zephyr, so to be honest, especially on Windows, it is really complicated, not to say another word. And and uh, it is usually one of the things that makes people like not adopting Zephyr because it is really complicated to get started on Windows. And if you need to do it, the guide will tell you that you need to install Chocolatry. I think it is a paid solution and it is also very complicated. So here, the idea just to create an extension that you can get started on Windows or other um, platform. It works on Mac and Linux as well, and also installs a host tools, uh, especially on Windows. So the idea when you install it, so I already uh, recorded a video because we don't have internet connection here. So. <laughs> um, so here, the idea when you install the extension, there is a button called install host tools, and it will automatically uh, well, here they, there is some magical scripts. They will just install native tools on your computer. Uh, so here it will just start installing things like Python, CMake, DTC, WGET, like the needed tools uh, for, for Zephyr. And once everything is installed, it will tell you, it will just do the verification at the end. If you see here at the end, it will tell you, yeah, these tools are installed and uh, all is good. So when there are new, newer versions, it will tell you, yeah, newer version, you know, you can install the, uh, the latest versions of these tools. So the purpose, just to uh, make developers, so I know that most developers, uh, well, there are a lot of developers, they use Linux or at least uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, but the, the great majority of developers, they actually still use Windows. And uh, we are targeting um, developers, they still were using Windows or at least want to test it on Windows and giving them this option in addition to, of course, using this great tool on Linux and Mac. Um, so once we have installed this tool, uh, you can uh, you can you can um, import an SDK. So, you know, importing the SDK. Usually, so this is like the Zephyr way, like it's the Zephyr SDK. Uh, you can install, install the full one or you can just do a minimal and you just select to which architecture because most of the time I don't care about other architecture. I am only only to use ARM. So uh, this I can just select the one that you uh, we want. By the way, if you'd like, I can zoom a little bit. Yeah, because I'm not. Sure. Yeah, I think it's better like zoomed like this. Anyways, you can just select uh, whatever the architecture that you'd like. Um, if you have already something that is already local already, you can just also import it if needed. And if you have like a worst, well, 
if you have worst work, uh, West workspace or if it's already hosted on your Git or you want your own one, so by default, you can use the one that is hosted on the Zephyr project. If you have your own mirror, you can also place it here. We already provide some minimal templates. So these templates just a minimum uh, required. So it is also for all the vendors that are provided by, by Zephyr. It is like the Zephyr way for, uh, for having them. It is here with the minimum, uh, with the minimum um, things. So here you can just select the template that you like. There is for STM, there is for Nordic, there is an XP for um, all the vendors. <clears throat> And you can specify the tag, you specify where, and this is it. You can also get it from the other ways, uh, or you can get the full one, and so on. And also, if you have your own manifest, it has a different name, you can also space, specify it here, and so on. So once everything is done, it will just create something like this one. Here, I created a manifest that works on both NXP board and STM32. And here on this manifest, there is a west.yaml that already exists. There's the minimal. If you'd like to add, uh, you modify it, you can just mod modify it here. And if you want to add, uh, update it, you just do a right click, update, that's it. You don't need to run any command line tool, uh, command line uh, command. If you need any command line, you can just do open terminal. It will just open it in a terminal. You already have it here and you can just do west and whatever the command that you'd like. And you can just continue with the, with the terminal if you'd like. Uh, so another thing, um, you can create applications or import existing application. You specify it is attached to which workspace. So it is this workspace. You specify to which SDK. So here I only have one, but if you have many, you can just select whatever the SDK you have. The board, so you specify to which board. So in this one, I will make it uh, for the uh, MCX. Uh, so MCXN, so it is a freedom MCXN. Uh, uh, N947, this board from NXP. Uh, so you can, this one, I can just uh, use it. And I will, uh, so the project that I want, it is, let's say Blinky. So here you have all the samples that you have in Zephyr. You have, you can search between the samples. So you can have Blinky, LLX, or you can just select whatever the, uh, the project that you want here. So let's take Blinky. Let's go to the basics. Blinky, it will suggest the name, so it will be Blinky. I will select where I want to place it. So I will place it in the folder called Meetup. And select, create. Here you can also change the place symbol. There are many options that are possible. So there you go. Now the application was created. Uh, so this application, sometimes I want to use it because Zephyr is portable. If you want to use it on other architecture, if you want to test it on another board, you can also add other boards here. You can activate here multi-build. So when you enable multi-build, you can specify another build configuration. So let's say I want to use, so let's say I want you have the Blinky also that works on other boards. So here I have, well, I have an old SM32, but it still works. So let's use this STM32 uh, F4. Let's call it like this. Um, so now it will add a new so for which board it is for the STM32F4 Disco. So here I have now two build configuration. One for the the primary is going to be for this Freedom and the other one is for the F4. I can change the, here I can switch between these uh, uh, these builds. So I can change the, the default one. So I'm now going to work on this one or the other one. So to build it, I can click here on the build or you already have a build button over there. You can use it for build, okay. So now this is the basics, just building the application. And this is great. Now we can build the application on Windows. Don't uh, So mission one achieved. So the next mission is to debug it. So debugging boards on Zephyr, we have a, a special way for debugging boards. We have a very powerful tool. I see, by the way, I, th I see the future of debugging is using West debug because it is it works on any board. And I can just do West debug and it works, it is magic. So, uh, so the idea here, the, we're going to create an interface for REST debug and configure it and attach it to VS Code. Um, so this one here, so you know what? I will just also build it for the freedom as well. So yeah, I'm just building it for both of them. Um, I'm just going to wait a bit for it uh, for it to finish. So while waiting it to finish building, uh, the idea when you when you work with with host tools, um, you need to install debug tools. So installing debug tools. It, you should go to each vendor and for each board to see how it works. So the idea here, we should we're going to create debug pack. 
So debug pack, you can just use, for example, here we have a debug pack for open OCD that works with the SCM. This is rebuilt by Zephyr, by the way, and we need the cube programmer. So here we tested on some on many boards and it, it worked this way. So we are open also for the SCM, uh, for the SC microcontroller also to add their contribution here if they want to add others. And if you'd like for the NXP, you have the you have here the link server because uh, link server, you have a link to go and directly install it from their website. And if you have uh, Pi OCD, so Pi OCD it, it today works on most board. It works on the NXP board, it works on the SCM32 board, and many other boards uh, as well. So let me show you how, how to de debug it. Uh, there is something called Debug Manager, or I can just simply click Debug here. So let me just open it through the Debug Manager. And Debug Manager is just going to create a debug session for you. You select which application, so I'm doing Blinky. Because I have multi-build, you specify to which build configuration. So let's say I want to do it for the primary, it's for the for the NXP board. And here it will automatically parse it and automatically detect the options. So um, there is also the SVD because it is interesting also to add the SVD to see the uh, the uh, options. So here you can just browse, browse, I mean, and select the uh, the SVD. So here I have an SVD for this board. Oops, I used the wrong one. There you go. Okay, this is an XML. Okay, uh, so here we have many runners. So you know in Zephyr you have West and you can specify the runners. So it is if you need to know which runner is compatible with the board, you have to read the code of Zephyr. So here we created some magical code that's going to read this code for you and will tell you which one is compatible and which one is not compatible. So we know that the this MCXN is compatible with uh, Link Server, JLink, or PyOCD. So just to try something new, let's try PyOCD. You just do PyOCD and it will tell you, okay, so you, you don't need to install anything here. You do debug. So for PyOCD, it will automatically it will automatically go and download the, uh, the PyOCD pack. Here, I already downloaded it. But if it was needed, it will also go and download the pack uh, needed for this one. So now here you have the debug session working. And uh, let me just show you. It will start by adding a breakpoint at the beginning of the main. And uh, you can see here uh, the variables, the local variable registers, and so on. And also you can see peripherals. OK. And uh, if you just resume it, you can see here the board blinking. So um, it would also be nice to see it on other boards. So I will also show, I will just prove that it also works on SCM32, fingers crossed. So I can also have both of them running at the same time, by the way. Uh, I think I don't think I have enough time to show it to you, but it is possible, believe me. Uh, so for this one, I will uh, just do this one. It will also, the same thing, it will detect all the things automatically. But this is an old board, so it doesn't have Pi OCD. I will also change the GDB board. The runner, I'm going to use Open OCD. And uh, here it will, because I already did the, installed the Pi OCD, it already detected in the path because I clicked on Install Pi OCD. It has all did all the magic to add it in the path and debug. And there you go. Just one last quick, one more minute. Uh, just to uh, to finish here with with a few other options. So we, I just showed you basic things, building and debugging, but there are many other things to take also in, uh, to consider. Uh, so here, the proof it works. Um, sorry, it also blinks. <laughs> so just one final word: uh, when you have an application, you also need to run the menu config, GUI config. You can do it, and there are a lot of hidden options we don't know that exist in West. Here we put them in evidence. For example, hardening config. This is not very common, but actually there is a command in West to see the command that you, the config option you have, if they are good or not. So it will interpret all of this for you. And one last thing, you can also have memory analysis, SPDX for the SBOM, install the dependencies, analyze the SPDX generated using the tools. We can already install them and test them. Many other things. I will just show you the pun cover. And I will stop after this one. So pun cover is this a tool for detecting stack overflow. Uh, it is not very popular because we don't know that it actually exists in Zephyr. But West already has everything here available for this one. And it will trust OMI, uh, open automatically the, the code and will show you. It will. Uh, I can just see uh, the size of the stacks or the worst case stack uh, memory uh, consumed by, uh, per, per functions. So, well, 
per, per, per function. So here I also forgot to enable one option here. It will only, only show me the ROM uh, size. Uh, yeah, here only have the code size. So this one has the worst case is 204 ROM size because the stack, you need also a config option. I forgot to add it in my project. Anyways, it will also show you the worst uh, case stack memory and everything. It was pretty quick. <laughs> if you need more information about this, just let me know uh, and uh, we'll show it more things. There's also a simulator that would, would be also nice to show it uh, to you how it works. Thank you.